The goal of this video series is to demonstrate how to build accessible websites. In this video I will talk about how to build websites that are accessible using a keyboard only. Before I jump into practical demonstrations, I will first try to answer some questions. First question I will try to answer is, who navigates a website using a keyboard only? According to PowerMapper.com, 7% of working age adults have a severe dexterity difficulty. Severe dexterity difficulties mean users are unlikely to use a mouse and rely on the keyboard instead. We can also group types of impairments in three main categories. Permanent. Example, someone who only has one arm and is not comfortable using a mouse. Situational. Example, a new parent who is holding a baby and at the same time navigating a website. And temporary. Someone who has an arm injury and relies on a keyboard to navigate online. The next question I will try to answer is, what users expect when they navigate your website using a keyboard only? First the website should be navigable. They expect to interact with your website and they want to visit each part of your website as soon as possible. In this video, using practical examples, I will explain each point in detail. To explain things in detail I will now visit the Web Accessibility Initiative official website. Using a mouse I will now click the last item in the navigation bar. I will now do the same action, click on the same element, but using a keyboard only. To interact with an element, keyboard users need to move the so-called focus sequentially through all interactive elements on a page until they reach the desired element. The currently focused element is highlighted visually. To click on the element, you need to hit enter on your keyboard. Moving from one focusable item to the next focusable item is done by using the tab key in your keyboard. This sequential navigation sometimes is called tabbing. Focusable items typically are links, buttons, and form controls. In order to reverse the direction of focus in a web page you can do that by using Shift plus Tab. So what are the responsibilities of a web developer? Since users use the Tab key to move through each focusable element on the website, you need to make sure that the element on focus is always highlighted. If the element is not highlighted there is no way for the user to know which element they are clicking. The most common approach to highlight an element is to use the Outline CSS property. You can also set the outline offset to 2 pixels. This way you make sure the outline does not overlap with the element. Another thing to keep in mind is the outline color. The color of the outline should always have a high contrast with the background of the element. Let me show you an example. Here I am going to set the link's color to white. and the background of the section to black. I didn't change the previous outline color, so at the moment it is a dark color. When I use tab to navigate each link in this section, it is not possible to understand which link is on focus, even though the outline is technically there. For the section below, the outline is visible. To avoid this, don't use static colors for outline of the elements. If you use current color CSS value, the color of the outline will be the same as the element. So if the element is visible on the front end, so will be the outline of that element. This value is supported on all the modern browsers, so you will have no issues with this. Another thing to check in your website is the tab order. Is the order of the elements logical or not? This is what I mean by that. Here I am focusing on the search icon on the header of the page. When I press tab, I expect the next focusable element to be the first item of the navigation bar. But that didn't happen, I was redirected to the second element. By pressing tab multiple times, I was finally able to access the element. This was confusing, and this should be avoided. Some libraries you might use on front-end development, or even some new sections that you develop might come with their own way on how to navigate it like the menu of this website. You can use the arrows on your keyboard to navigate it. If this is the case, let your users know how to use it. Don't make them think too hard how your website works. So to sum up, everything a user can do using a mouse on your website, a keyboard user should also be able to do it, 
without being trapped in a section and without getting confused on how the website works. With that being said, let's now talk about efficiency. Let's say a user wants to navigate all the footer elements one by one. When you first land in a page, you will have to go through each element on that page till you reach the footer. As you can understand this is time consuming and a really frustrating approach. So let's see if there is a better and faster way to navigate the website. Skip to links can solve this issue. When I landed in this page, the first time I clicked tab, skip links appeared. In this case there are three skip links, if I click skip to footer link, the focus of the tab will be now set to footer, so this way I manage to skip all the elements that I don't want to interact with in a web page. Based on how complex the website is, you can decide how many skip links you want to have. Another efficient way to navigate the website is by searching the element you are looking for. Here I am looking for the blog. When I found the link I was looking for, I pressed escape on my keyboard to focus that element. And by hitting enter, I was able to visit that page. So, if you are a developer or a quality assurance specialist, these are some things to keep in mind when building or testing keyboard functionalities on a website. And this is the end of this video.